Am I the jerk for making a joke about my brother's affair at his wedding? When I was in elementary school, I was the type of kid who got disrupts class often on their report card, so I never focused much on school. My district had this system where they would pair high schoolers with younger kids to help them with school, etc. My mom made me do that after I kept getting in trouble. So my tutor was a freshman, Abby. She would come over to our house after school to help me with my homework or something. I barely remember. My brother John was the same age as Abby, so they would talk to each other and they ended up dating. She stopped tutoring me officially after like a month. But since she was at her house a lot, I also talked to Abby a lot and we were close as well. Fast forward 10 years and Abby and John got married and had a kid together. Five years later, John tells me he's getting a divorce because he's met someone new. It sucked because I like John and Abby together a lot, but whatever. Then he tells me he had an affair with his new girlfriend. It also sucks and I told him he shouldn't have hurt Abby like that, but whatever. I also asked Abby how she was doing and she wasn't doing well but she told me she didn't want her to be the reason I have a bad relationship with my brother. However, two months before the wedding, Abby calls me and tells me that my brother's girlfriend has been harassing her non-stop. She showed me the text and his girlfriend was saying some pretty disturbing things about how she's so much better than Abby, taunting Abby for having to share custody of her kid now, etc. Just making fun of and bullying her. I told my brother about this and he said that he would, quote, ask his girlfriend about it. A month later, I asked him if it was ever brought up and he said he did, but he saw nothing wrong with the text, which pissed me off. I confirmed that he saw the same text that I saw. Abby apologized for involving me in the whole thing in the first place and encouraged me to still go to the wedding, where my brother asked me to make a speech. The speech went well until I made a joke. The gist of the joke was me turning to his new wife and telling her that if she's learned anything from this, she should know that my brother, quote, will never let his wife stop him from finding the love of his life. This got my brother and his wife really mad and they kicked me out shortly after and my brother has been calling slash texting me non-stop yelling at me. So I made a joke about my brother's affair. Am I the jerk? Before we even talk about the OP, the brother is the jerk because he is the one that had the affair. The new wife, even if she didn't know that the brother was already married at the time, is still the jerk because she's going after Abby, constantly hitting her up saying she'll never be as good as her out of some weird jealousy complex. But then at the end of it, yeah, the OP is also a jerk amongst all these other jerks because rather than trying to resolve that on his own, he went in front of everybody to put him on blast at his wedding, his special day. If he really wanted to get this resolved because it didn't sit right with him or because he wanted to defend Abby, then talking to the two of them, the brother and the new wife independently would have been the right play and got the point across a lot more effectively because doing it in front of everyone just makes them really defensive and not even really think about what he's trying to say. But maybe was justified doing what he did. Let me know what you think and who is the jerk in this situation because there's a lot of candidates. If you didn't know, there's actually a playlist in the YouTube description that has all the stories so you can play them in the background while you're commuting or gaming or building your next commander deck in Magic the Gathering. Whatever it is you do. Or just listen on the podcast. This happened about 15 years ago. I think this is the worst Karen experience I have personally ever had. But honestly, I feel lucky. My friends and I were at a local lake park. It was fully fence and you needed a key to get in. The key was given out by the homeowners group and you had to live there to have one. The park was maintained 100% by a fee taken from the HOA. The fence was 10 feet tall and topped with razor wire. These rich people really took their muddy lake park seriously. Of note, the park was about 60 by 200 feet with a little beach on a small rural lake. The park belonged to probably between 30 to 40 different homes. At this point, we were the only people in the park. There were six of us and we were sitting at a table about a hundred feet into the park away from the fence eating and working on Dungeons and Dragons sheets when we hear screaming. I was the speaker for my group of friends. We were all about 20 years old. They were art slash STEM students and I was a six foot nine security guard. So I went up to this middle-aged couple. When they saw only I was coming, they started freaking out. The man with his fist at his side screaming. The woman 
doing this weird dance, making gesturing motions, and using the threatening lady sing-song voice. The rest of the group follows, but stays back 20 feet. I'll attempt to get the dialogue right. Mostly, I remember the repetition, the smiles, and the clapping. Karen started clapping her hands and smiling and said, Okay, time to go. Come on, come on, go, go, go. I said, Is there a problem? Karen, smiling bright, You know you can't be here. You know that. She did a big smile and clapped. Time to go. We can't be here. I point to a friend that lives here and we have the key and show the key. Now we have the locked gate to the park right between us and they aren't making any attempt to come in. Where did you get that? It doesn't matter. Let's go. Can't have you here. You know you can't be here. My kids play here. We can't have that. And then she smiled. And I said, no, we can be here and we aren't leaving. Her face immediately falls and says, don't talk to me that way. Get out now. Now, now, now. She's still clapping, but no longer smiling. No, we're here in the middle of the day. We're not causing problems. We have a key and ID showing we can be here. Do you have a key? I don't need a key to be here to tell you to leave. I'm telling you to go now. She starts rapidly clapping in the group behind me and doing come here gestures with both hands. The husband appears to be attempting the bad cop with his arms crossed over a puffed chest, chin up watching me through sunglasses. I say to my girlfriend who is the resident here, hey honey, are you allowed here? You want to stay? She nods without saying anything to this. Karen's eyes go to her and narrow. Sadly, this is where things go bad. Oh really? You live here. Are you sure about that? Are you sure you're allowed here? Her smile comes back wider than ever, and she pulls out her phone and dials 911 to show us. You want to explain this to the police, honey? She has a big smile and direct eye contact. Now, this is in 2005, 2006-ish, in a rather rich white neighborhood, and my girlfriend is obviously Middle Eastern. She backs down immediately, because to her, the truth doesn't help here. These people don't appear to even live in the neighborhood, but she's sure the cops would take their side anyway. So, Karen... Karen is wiggling her phone at us and wagging her eyebrows. I really, really want to push back on this because I felt like I could handle the police. Police interaction was part of my daily job as security, and at that age, I foolishly thought that it would matter. But my friends were really freaked out about the police, so we packed up while they stood there smiling, clapping, and sometimes calling out, Hurry up! Hurry up! They waited until we left and started following us back to her house. Her phone was out and still pre-dialed. I vividly I vividly remember her holding the phone in front of her, displaying it to us whenever we would look back at them, showing us the 911 with her thumb hovering over the call button the whole way back. She said, Oh, you're good, kids. Thanks for doing the right thing. You'll understand someday why you need to keep your neighborhood safe. Thanks for listening to us. They repeated similar things the whole way back, stood at the bottom of the driveway, and stared us down until we went in the front door. They then both smiled and waved. The husband took out a small camera and took photos photos of the house, the mailbox, and individual pictures of the license plates for the four cars in the driveway. I didn't actually expect them to leave. I thought they were going back to the house for some sort of secondary play, but they just went back to the house to not cause any more trouble, trouble for existing. One of the comments asked about this generally and the OP said, I didn't want to, but I'm happy that we did in hindsight. The cops would have made us leave either way because that's the easiest way to keep the peace. After working security for six more years after this, I've literally seen hundreds of examples of them. Just having everyone leave is the easiest. I mean, that's probably true in a work scenario, but the place where you live, you're going to establish that you're just going to leave whenever somebody doesn't want you to be there, even though you live there. That's definitely a terrible precedent to set because from this point on, every time he goes over to his girlfriend's house and they want to go outside to this park, they're going to give the power to this random lady to tell them when to go home, even though they're all paying from the HOA. I get why he would think that in the context of work and working security, but when it comes to the place you actually live, that's not the play. But what would you do if you were in that situation? Would you have gone back home to keep the peace or would you have done something else in this situation? Let me know down below. A Karen thinks she owns the neighborhood park. Here's some background. I'm an autistic... 13-year-old boy with a twin sister living in the Chicago suburbs with my now five-year-old black Labra Chow, which is a Labrador Chow Chow mix. There is a small park behind my house with a large field, a small playground, and the neighborhood Karen. Now for the story. When I took my puppy to the park on a leash, the Karen was there with her swarm of brats and told me to get my dog out of her park. My sister's friend Lily has a much younger brother named James. James took his toy to the park but couldn't find 
explained his toy when it was time to leave. It turns out Karen's precious angel took his toy. When his mom confronted Karen, her bratty son had broken the toy. James's mom was fuming. And then the Karen said, Boys will be boys. Karen does not mandate anyone at her daycare of over 50 kids to wear masks. Karen stayed at the park until after dusk. I pointed to the sign at the entrance of the park saying, Park hours, dawn to dusk. And she said, So? Karen called me the R word. She thinks she owns the park. She is a helicopter daycare worker, and I'm pretty sure her daycare is not licensed. When I was using the swings of the playground, she would always say, Get off my swing! My child wants to use it! What should I do? The Karen herself here sounds like a schoolyard bully. She's running around taking claim of the individual swings and access to the park and staying there really late at night. She doesn't want dogs there. And in one of the updates, the OP said, my sister once wore a flannel shirt, black jeans, and combat boots, and she climbed a tree in the park, and the Karen told her she was a heathen and that she was a bad influence on her kids. It sounds like the Karen is frustrated something else in life, and she's just taking this out on a bunch of random people at the park, which obviously doesn't excuse acting like this, but I think the OP and his sister are both just collateral damage in the belligerent behaviors of this Karen. But if this was you in this situation, how would you handle it, especially at this age? Let me know down below. Am I the jerk for getting mad my tattoo artist hid their initials in my tattoo? I went to a tattoo shop in my area with the photo of the tattoo that I wanted. It was one my dad had gotten to honor my past grandfather who also had it. But the point is, it was important to me that the tattoo looked exactly as it did in the photo. I get to the shop, I explain everything, I pay, I get the tattoo, and we're done. I think it looks awesome, everything is great, until a few weeks later when I show my great grandmother the tattoo, she's static. She grabs my arm to look at and compliment the tattoo and then asks, Who's AJ? I ask her what she means and she points out on the tattoo where the initials A and J or maybe T were hidden into the tattoo. I am instantly pissed. My artist's first name starts with an A and the last name starts with a T. She tries to assure me it's no big deal if I hadn't noticed until now, but I reached out to the artist sort of irritated. They told me the style of art that I got is called traditional and it's pretty trad for all artists to do it in that style to put their initials. I demanded a partial refund and they refused. So I complained to the owner who made the artist give me a full refund. Now the artist is running a full smear campaign talking about moving shops and all kinds of stuff. My sister says that I'm a jerk for pushing the issue but I feel like at the end of the day I told you exactly what I wanted and you didn't do that. Am I the jerk? There's a lot of weird implications of putting somebody's initials on their body without them knowing. A lot of people say that the skin is the canvas for the tattoo artist in the same way that an actual canvas is for a painter or another type of artist. But all the artist had to do here was say before they started, hey, a trad tattoo, a traditional tattoo, typically has initials in it, just so you know. And that way, if the OP didn't want that, he would just say, no thanks, I'm not going to get this tattoo then. But the tattoo artist, I guess, just assumed that because it was traditional style that he would be okay with it instead of asking. And now, as some people have pointed out, it's kind of like this OP has been branded with this other person's name. At least coming from a background that isn't familiar or interested in traditional tattoo art style because he wanted to get it for a very specific reason. But who do you think is the jerk here and what would you do if one of the tattoos you had also included the initials of the artist tattooed onto your skin? Am I the jerk for embarrassing my father-in-law after I repeatedly asked him to explain his joke to me? I'm a 27-year-old female and I used to be an escort from the age of 18 until I was 23 years old. I'm not proud of it, but I also don't care because I did what I had to to keep studying and keep a roof over my head. That's how I met my now fiance, who's 37 years old, though he was never my client. We began to date when I was 25 and three or four months after that his brother-in-law quote exposed me i have no idea how he found out because there's no way my fiance knew and thus we had to come clean in front of his whole family yes i did that yes he knows yes he doesn't care it was two years ago at that time and we got over it after that there was a span of three to four months in where my mother-in-law and some of my fiance's aunts and cousins policed their husband when i was around it was really weird to be honest because these dudes were like 40 to 60 years old and I wasn't that desperate so my fiance shut down their nonsense hard and even though all that happened his family still gives me the side eye from time to time we thought it was behind us he proposed last year and five months ago we found out that I was pregnant
in. We were really happy about it, and we told his family as soon as we knew. His sisters and younger brother were happy for us, but his mom took me aside and begged me to be honest with her and asked if this was really my fiance's child. I was taken aback, but I just rolled my eyes and said, yes. She gave me some terrible speech about how she only wanted to make sure and that she was just happy to be a grandmother. Well, last week, we were at his parents with his family and some of his friends, and we were talking about the name, how he might look, some small talk. We love him regardless, but there's always some hope of, oh, I hope he gets your nose. Hmm, I like your eyes. I hope he gets them comments. And my father-in-law said that he and his children have a birthmark in the inner thigh and that even his grandchildren, one of my sister-in-law's kids, got them. So our baby might get it too. And then he said, but how can we know from who he got it? It may as well be from me, my boys or my brothers. And he and his brothers began to laugh. My fiance got mad. And before he could say anything, I said, I don't get it. And my father-in-law said, yeah, because it runs in the family. And I said again, I don't get it. Why would he get it from you? And he began to get nervous and said, because, you know, it's just a joke. And I said, but I don't get it. And you all laughed. Explain. It got to the point where some of his friends said, hey, it's not funny. So he excused himself and left. Later, my fiance's brother-in-law came to me and said that I was wrong for embarrassing him like that in his own house and that I knew what the joke was about and because of my past, I shouldn't be surprised. Now they're demanding that I apologize to my father-in-law. So am I the jerk for embarrassing my father-in-law after I repeatedly asked him to explain his joke to me? This is a really weird implication the father-in-law is trying to make with his future daughter-in-law. Clearly the fiance understands a joke enough to be frustrated by it, but he doesn't do anything about it. He just lets his wife take the brunt of this all. It's unbelievable that they want the OP to be the one that apologizes to the father-in-law when he's trying to imply that he has done the deed with the OP. That doesn't even make sense. It's so weird. I mean, imagine anyone in any situation, if you had a dad or somebody that was in a direct familial relationship with you, implying that with your wife in front of you. What she did in the past doesn't make that any more okay or more normal. So how would you handle a situation like this if somebody kept trying to push you like this? And who do you think was a jerk? Let me know down below below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Finish listening to the rest of the stories in the playlist by hitting the link at the top of the description. And if one day you want to become a streamer and you want to play some good music, but you don't want to worry about copyright issues, use the music that's linked down below. You can follow it. So one day when you stream, you already have it ready to go. It's free. But either way, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time.